My name is Trey McIntyre and I'm the Artistic Director of the Trey McIntyre Project. I don't know if I can describe my choreographic voice. People ask me that a lot and I think, um, you know, I don't, have a, I don't have an agenda in terms of what I'm really trying to communicate. All I'm really trying to do for myself is um, find out how to speak from the most honest place possible for myself, whatever that is. Um, you know, even if I'm making the most abstract work, where the idea or the movement comes from, uh, for me has to be the most um, exposing, uh, vulnerable, difficult place to work from. Um, and that's really kind of the idea that, that shapes everything else that I do. Um, you know, I, my, my background is certainly classical ballet. Um, you know, all my training uh, was about that. And, you know, I think I, I, I grew up with a real appreciation of the classical form and uh, the, the ease with which one can communicate physically through the ideas that, that ballet um, provide, um, you know. But having said that, you know, it's really just kind of a, a launching pad to to do anything. Um, you know, I, I've been I've been fortunate to, to have been choreographing long enough that you know I would certainly never want to continue doing something that I feel like I do well or have re reached some level of mastery. Um, you know, the process for me is really about growth all the time, no matter what. So, you know, even if I'm, it could be as simple as if I'm working on a phrase and come to a moment where I, I think, oh, this is, this could be a really um, beautiful conclusion to this phrase, or this could be a really meaningful conclusion. Uh, if it feels like something that I've done before, I'd say 90% of the time I'll veer to the left and, and do something different. And, you know, it might not be as great as what the other idea may have been, but I think you know once it's repeated, then it's dead. It's not really of that moment. It's not really uh, it's not really um, uncovering new territory. And um, you know the quote I always refer to, and I'm not sure actually who you're attributed to, is that uh, great art is a journey into the unknown. And, you know, I certainly aspire toward great art, and I don't know if I'll ever have the chance to achieve it in my life, but at least that's, that's the goal. So, um, you know, I'm constantly setting things up in a way um, where I'm, I'm endlessly challenged. Um, and if, if time in the studio starts to feel comfortable, I'll throw some kind of wrench into it uh, to, uh, and like to make it, to make it, uh, to make me uh, challenge my own psyche or my own history or my own ability to do something I haven't done before. I guess, you know, I, ch I, I have learned to gauge success in a different way for myself. And, you know, I think the traditional forms that we, as a society, really gauge what success is, you know, you know, there's so many parables about, like, how that's a, a dead end and how like gauging your success by like what other people say about you or what kind of uh, a, a monetary uh, gain you have or what kind of acclaim you get. Um, you know, it's all very nice and it's wonderful for people to enjoy what you do. Um, I certainly don't work independently from that, but um, that's not success or failure to me. It's more that, you know, have I gone to a new place and have I at least taken the risk to innovate? Um, that to me is thrilling, and it's kind of all I really care about in the work. Um, so I don't, I have, I haven't, I haven't felt, at least in my adult life, the the pressure to repeat myself because of of success. It's just not, it's just not interesting to me. What? I think it's important for a young choreographer to. Um, I don't know if emulate's the right word, but to at least observe the choreographers that they respect and figure out why that works for them. But I think you reach a certain point where there's a limit to the growth you can get from that. And, I, and I, for myself, um, you know, really made a decision at a certain point to stop looking at other choreography because I think, I don't know, there's something about dance, um, you know, like you're watching a performance and, and you take on 
the physicality of the performers that you're seeing. So somehow, on some level, your muscles are twitching in tandem with what the dancers are doing on stage. So I think there's a osmosis that happens with choreography, that if you see choreography that moves you or inspires you, it then becomes a part of your vocabulary. So if I'm seeing too much work that's affecting me in that way, it tends to, I think, look like the work that I've seen, and I don't think that really serves the, the bigger picture or myself. You know, I, I, I don't have a, I don't make a conscious effort to find inspiration just because I think it's in everything. Like, if your eyes are open to it, the, the earth is electric, and everything around you has so much meaning and resonance. Um, so I think it's more the discipline of just being awake uh, and and um, taking in all the things that are around. I mean, I really, in terms of thinking and in terms of uh, ideas, I really respond to visual artists a great deal and in all mediums. I like the way that visual artists think and I like the way they uh, think about content. And um, I mean, it's certainly different for every artist, but at least, uh, you know, conceptually caring about what a, a work work of art means. Um, I get a lot from my conversations with, with artists. We did, uh, we did here in, in Boise uh, last year, this project that was really energizing for me, it was called Nine Plus One. And I asked, I think it was 12 different local visual artists to interpret all the different members of the company and whatever their chosen medium is. And it was a really wide array from printmaking to uh, jewelry uh, to paintings to photography and there was a bartender and a songwriter and um, you know it had, there's a there were a lot of benefits to the company in doing that uh, you know the collaborations with the dancers I think the dancers got a lot out of seeing all these different ways of working uh, the immediate connections it gave us to the community um, artistic community but also just different parts of the community right away uh, were really great but I mean my main motive was more selfish in that it was that I got to meet and work with all these different people that are really brilliant in their medium and see how they work and <clears throat> kind of bring them into my world and, and ex explain a little bit how choreography works and they can sit in on rehearsal and, and watch how that happens and, um, and really got a lot out of it. I mean to be honest uh, it's not sad for me because the medium for me doesn't have to be dance. Um, I think had I been a visual artist or a writer or a you know, um, chef, uh, it would still feel like the same thing. To me, the impulse is a creative one, not necessarily just a dance one. I'm, I'm so fascinated by the, all the opportunities that that presents, but um, that's not really where my passion comes from. Um, it's, it's to have a medium to figure out something about the universe in a way that I didn't realize before. I mean, da I just kind of fell into dance, really. Like, when I was a kid, I w wanted to be in music theater. Like, I wanted to be, like, a little showbiz kid. And I, I was, like, a little porky pig, like, short and fat. And I would go to the dance auditions, and I, like, like I didn't play sports or anything like that. So I was so uncoordinated. So my mom just put me in ballet class. And it was really just that. Like, it wasn't like, Mom, I want to be a dancer. It was more like, I want to do this other thing. So let's go get the training. But I, um, you know, that kind of took off on its on its own because, I'm, you know, I'm from Wichita, Kansas. And <clears throat> I was the only guy that kind of stuck it out in school. So it's, you know, it was kind of good for being, like, prepubescent to, like, have this kind of, like, dose of self-esteem. But, but, I mean, even at that point, like, I... I didn't like it. Like I didn't like going to class. I thought it was really boring and square and hard. And um, I used to skip class a lot, actually. But um, you know, I was immediately a very creative kid. So I, I would start. I had this new material, and I didn't didn't probably fully get the whole picture. I didn't know what choreography really was, but I started making up new dances because I knew that's what the teacher was doing. You know, she was making up dances. So I always tell the story that when I first started choreographing was. Um, it was one day when I uh, was skipping class and I was in the parking lot and I was showing some friends some steps I'd made up and my teacher was watching me through the window of the class that I was supposed to be in and, and so she came outside and, and she asked me what I was doing and when I told her, instead of punishing me, she said, well, why don't you just come inside and teach it to the rest of the class? And, you know, it was that one little bit of creative teaching that I think really set me on a path and, you know, I always thought in terms of... Uh, 
you know, I never, I never had that focus of like, oh, I'm going to be a dancer one day. Never. It was always like, um, you know, going. I went to North Carolina School of the Arts, and when I was at Houston Ballet Academy, um, it was always like, this is my focus and my college to become a choreographer. And, and it was the same. Like when I was with Houston Ballet, um, you know, I was there because the director Ben Stevenson had created a position for me in the company of, of choreographic apprentice, and. Um, you know, so even you know, from his end, the focus was not me being a dancer, but it was to be in that environment and you know to learn what it was to be a part of a, a company and you know to work with some of the greatest choreographers in the world. And I got to work with some, you know, you know, a few of them were in the very last years of their life, like Margot Fontaine and Sir Kenneth McMillan and um, I think other people like Yuri Killian. I know came and worked when we were there, and uh, uh, well, Ben Stevenson and Christopher Bruce. Um, you know, all those people. So all that was in the end in the service of, of getting to be a creator. But I guess just, you know, <clears throat> long story to make the point, it was never so much about like, dance is what feeds me. I mean, when the company first began, um, one thing I understood right away was that everything needed to come from one idea. That, um, couldn't be a lot of disparate elements coming together to make the company happen. I think you know you have an opportunity with a single choreographer company where it's one clear artistic vision or, or uh, institutional vi vision for the entire uh, company. So you know in the beginning I had my hand in everything. Um, you know what is the ethic that we move forward with? Why do we exist? Um, um, you know, into this day, I mean, the, the questions asked all the time. You know, why on earth would you have a ballet company in America at this point in history? And that's something to really consider beyond ballet is beautiful. I mean, it's not, it's not enough of a reason to spend, you know, more than a million and a half dollars every year. Um, but, you know, I, I think I, I have as quickly as possible moved out at least of, a, of the administrative parts of the company to the extent that I can. Um, you know, it's impossible to completely do that because but I, but I do think that <clears throat> those things do take away creatively um, just because there's just so much psychic energy you have to spend in a day. And so if you're doing everything, you know, there's not a lot left for the, the things that you do in the studio. Um, having said that though, working on things like the graphic design for the company um, and the video projects that we do, for me, does nothing but feed the work. Um, being challenged to think creatively in a different medium um, is incredibly inspiring for me. Um, you know, I wonder if things, I don't know if this is true, but I wonder if things like for the video work, if eventually once I, once I understand the technology and the form, uh, that if I want to work with more collaborators at some point, um, you know, a cinematographer who can then lend more to the process. Um, but I want to. I want to have enough of a mastery of the skill myself that when I'm collaborating with somebody, that I can know what I'm talking about. I don't. I don't think I have the goal of accessibility, um, because I think there's some part of that that feels like it would be dumbing it down for people, uh, which would never be my purpose. But I do consider the audience for sure. Like I. I want to. I want to make sure that. The experience on stage is not just for me. You know, it's a lot of people that have to be involved to be in a show. You know, to be in a theater with 2,000 people and for it to be worth the, their while to come in there, um, there has to be some uh, point of reference for them to not uh, feel alienated or feel stupid when they see a show. Um, and I think it's I think it's very possible. And, I, and this just may be my own personal aesthetic because it's not so much conscious effort on my part, but I think it's possible to make challenging work um, that a lot of people can also um, participate in and enjoy. Um, you know, I don't think about that a whole lot, I, I suppose, and I think I maybe avoid it because I don't want it to become conscious. I just want to kind of keep doing um, what I'm doing, but it has has seemed to have worked out that way.